Welcome back, Freedom Savers. It's been a while since I've done videos, so you're getting two this week. Uh, one is my overall net worth, uh, which was actually due at the start of the month, and so was this one, really. And this one is how are my portfolios doing if I compare them to the market indexes? Uh, you know, I just watched um, Choose FI, uh, and I listened to their podcast as well, but I watched them on YouTube as well. And they were learning about dividend growth investing and their arguments towards it. And they had a couple of experts on there, supposedly experts, but, you know, experienced investors talking about the benefits and downfalls of dividend growth investing. But I believe they were off track uh, by quite a bit. Um, they didn't mention, well, they mentioned yield on cost at the very last, like, 10 seconds of the thing. And they didn't go into it at all, which is a huge thing with dividend growth investing. Um so they, basically, I, I disagree with the majority of their arguments for dividend growth investing not being a viable strategy compared to index investing. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a huge fan of index investing, and uh, I think it's fantastic. But as you know, I maintain a dividend growth, invest, a dividend growth portfolio in my Roth and can plan on continuing to do so eh, forever, pretty much. Um, and it has beat the market since its creation. Now, it hasn't been created that long, but I feel it has the potential to continually beat the market. Um, not that that really matters with dividend growth investing because all you're really concerned about is increasing the amount of dividends that you get paid over time. Um, and I think that's another thing where Choose FI went way off the, the how do you say this? They went off the mark. Because they hear that. They hear that a dividend growth investor doesn't care if the value of their stock drops or not. And they immediately make the assumption, and it's just an assumption, that a dividend growth portfolio doesn't meet, doesn't uh, match the performance of the market like an index fund will. And they are way off base because most of the dividend growth investors I know who concentrate solely on dividend growth investing are not only matching the market, they're outperforming the market. Um, and that includes myself. And even though I've been doing it for a short time compared to many of those experienced dividend growth investors. So I don't think while they're trying to do their research, I don't think they're really doing the research with long-term dividend growth investing. If they put, say, PPC Ian on their, uh, on their podcast, I think they would learn quite a bit about dividend growth investing and the benefits of it. Uh, anyway, I've rambled on enough about that. I did uh, watch that and I put a very long um, paragraph, I guess you could say, a uh, comment on that video. Um, anyways, to this video, portfolios versus the market. As you know, I liquidate all my portfolios except for the Roth IRA, the no rules portfolio, which is now named the taxable account, and the zero expense ratio from Fidelity. Uh, zero expense ratio f from Fidelity is just uh, FZROX, which is just the total stock market index fund, and um, it has zero expense ratios. And then the taxable account, I am only holding $100 in VTI, which is, again, the overall total stock market from Vanguard ETF, and it has like a 0.04 or 0.05% expense ratio. And then, of course, the Roth IRA, which is the dividend growth investing portfolio. And as far as I know, will always be. So let's compare it to the market. I've already put in the amounts, the current values as of today, which is April 13, 2019. I already had the amounts that these portfolios begin with on that date. This was what the market was at. And so I could easily have it calculate the um, portfolio performance and uh, have it calculate the performance of each one of these. And actually, I have failed to do that here. So let's copy and paste that. Except for this one is going to be N3 minus K3. Oh, I didn't put the mounts in. I need to do that on all of these. There we go. 
And I forgot to do this part, which is copy that to there. Um, undo that because that is not what I tried copying. Copy, paste. And this one, copy and paste. There we go. So now we'll see how this really does because I had it wrong the first time I tried recording this video. So overall, my performance, I am beating the market on average by 11.63%. Most of that is due to this taxable one, which is up 28.98%. So the Roth is up is at 6.86% and it's obviously beat all three indexes. Um, overall average of the indexes of the market is 0.96% since the Roth was created. And the difference that my Roth is up is 5.9%. It's beating the market by 5.9%. The taxable account is beating the market by 28.98% because of me playing around with PG&E and GE and all those and making a good profit on those. Um, in the future, I may adjust this down and change the date to the time I actually bought VTI and just see how VTI is doing versus the market. And then the zero expense ratio from Fidelity, this is kind of surprising to me. Um, I expected it to be beating the market actually, um, and it is not. Uh, its performance currently is sitting at 6.2%, uh, and the average of the market since it was created is up 7.56%. So it is actually not beating the market. It is down 1.37% under the market performance. So that's no bueno. Uh, we will have to uh, keep tracking that and see how it performs over a longer period of time since this was only created in February. Um, 11.63% on average, uh, overall, uh, per my performance is 18%. Um, I'm beating the market by 11.63%. I want to see if I move this out and I change my calculation to only two. Without the uh, PG&E and GE and all the SOI and all the ones I was playing with in the no rules portfolio, I am still beating the market by 2.95% on my Roth and uh, on, on these three portfolios together, or on these two portfolios, just the Roth and the zero expense ratio. And that's assuming that I had a zero percent there. Um, I mean, we could change that to three. It'd be 1.97% if I had zero return on the taxable account, which obviously I don't. VTI is outperforming or maybe not outperforming, but it's, it's at least coming close to the market itself. So anyway, we're undo all of this up to there. Uh, so as you can see, I am beating the market by two point something percent or by 11.63%. If you count my trades I made on the, the no rules portfolio originally, I think I may change this back and change the date to the time I bought VTI and we'll just track VTI and see how it's doing um, in the future. But for now, this is how the portfolios are doing. I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And if you liked the video, hit that like button for me. If you want to hear any specific type of information, anything that you're interested in, you have any questions, just drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know your opinions on this video or any other video I've made. And if you know anyone else that might be interested in this video, please be sure to share it on your social media and share the knowledge. Thanks, guys.